Oh, the old logbooks. Logbooks, logbooks, logbooks. Logbooks? Logbooks, logbooks. These are pilot logbooks. There's a couple of different kinds. All of them are pretty much generally the same. Um, some may have more lines or entries than others. Some may have um, more options and more columns. Uh, but for the most part, they all pretty much work the same. If you're starting out and you want to be a professional pilot, then go after the professional pilot logbook. Um, if you're just a, kind of a recreational pilot and you're only going to be doing a couple hundred hours a, a year, if you're a student pilot and you're just, yeah, sure, whatever, let me see if I want to do this, you, you know, get something a little bit smaller. Regardless of, of what kind of logbook that you get, um, the 6151 talks about the things that are required to write down or to uh, enter into the logbook. And then there's also different uh, requirements in 6151 that talk about what you're able to uh, log as, as pilot and command time or dual instruction or dual receive time and, and those types of things. But regardless of uh, what kind of logbook that you get, uh, there's going to be different uh, types of, of columns and, and uh, things that you can enter into the, the logbook. Uh, pretty much they'll they'll start over here on the the left hand side and start with like the date uh, specifically what year and what date and then aircraft make and model the aircraft identifier and then you know usually like a, a to from and then any remarks and then in here there's going to be um, like the number of uh, instrument approaches or the number of legs uh, usually in the aircraft category, there's a blank space, so you can write in, you know, say rotorcraft helicopter or R44, or whatever. Um, and then airplane, single engine, multi-engine, or cross-country flight time, and then day and night. So the actual conditions of the flight, uh, and then, you know, instrument, um, simulated instrument, so on and so forth. And then, you know, ground instruction, dual received, and then pilot and command, and then a blank one for a different uh, kind of pipe pilot time that you want to keep track of and then the total duration of flight so all of these uh log books have pretty much the same information some will have uh, additional uh information whoops <laughs> i'll show you uh oof, it's chicken scratch handwriting um like for example in in my log book you know things that that i would um start out with was the the date and the time um, the type of, uh, helicopter, the, where I was taking off from the duration of flight and so on and so forth. And so the idea is that the notes, uh, over here, I was taking, uh, you know, those are, those were student names that I was taking. Um, uh, and so I just kept track of the student names and then the flight school that I was working for had, you know, uh, detailed records of what we accomplished on that particular day or for that particular lesson. So anyways, um, those are pilot logbooks. Um, now contained within 6151 is a whole bunch of other information about like when you can log certain flight time and when you can't and, you know, uh, second in command if it's required. Um, and then what you're allowed to, to log as PIC. Um, and then also some additional things for like flight instructors, uh, when you're able to log uh, pilot and command time, even though that you're not on the controls uh, per se, you are providing instruction, uh, there's you know some unique rules. So anyways, look uh, below or read below specifically uh, for all the, the, the general information about when to log flight time and when not to log flight time. So 6151 talks about pilot log books. If you're ready to get serious about learning how to fly helicopters, head over to 3gheliprep.com. It's like these videos, but way more structured and a lot closer to making you a real pilot. You won't regret it, unless you hate helicopters, in which case I'm not sure why you're even still watching this.